All right, we made it. <laughs> so here we are. Welcome everyone. This is Bill Guting on with Kimmy P who hasn't figured out how to turn on her camera, but she's on with us. Hi, hello and, everyone. And, and we have Sharif on as our special, very special guest today. And Ashley is here as well. Hi. <laughs> Ashley Jones. So anyway, so here's why we knew we had to have Sharif on. And then we're just going to let him run, right? He's got a lot of information for us. So as we all know, there is a lot of uncertainty, unpredictability, certainly a lot of distress going on in the commercial arena. But as we know, that's when serious investors jump in and take advantage because amidst the chaos, there always lies seeds of opportunity. But there's some pros, there's some pitfalls, right? What's that old saying, man? You don't want to catch a falling knife. So bottom line is you got to know what you're doing if you're going to take advantage of the opportunity. So that's why we knew we had to get Sharif in here to make sense of the madness. Where are the real opportunities? Where are the true opportunities? What does the commercial landscape look like in 2023 and for the rest of the decade? And how do you take advantage of it? And what we know about Sharif, man, he's a master at just laying it out and making and simplifying it. So we're going to try and pull out of him his blueprint for taking advantage of commercial real estate opportunities in today's current and crazy economy. So we're excited to have you on, Sharif. We're here to learn just like everyone else, man. So take it away, Sharif Medawar. Well, thank you, sir. So this is Sharif Medawar. I want you to watch, listen, and learn. I will not hold anything back. I have a lot to share with you. So uh, as you probably know, little disclaimer here, I am a real estate investor, an educator, an author, and a real estate fund manager. I've been in the real estate fund business for over 14 years. I used to teach this in 2007. So it's been a while. I am not an attorney, although I have a full staff of attorneys in-house and I have CPAs and accountants, etc. But when you're ready to do your own deals, I suggest for you to seek a local qualified attorney, a local qualified CPA to be able to actually have the proper guidance from licensed um, experienced people. So um, here are a couple of my websites, sharifmetawar.com kind of gives you an all encompassing what I do. And Mixif.com is one of my real estate funds that has been up and running for 14 years. SFI fund is a Reg D506C that allows me to publicly solicit. Uh, CREPR is my own portfolio of commercial property. I'm the largest holder of commercial historic properties in Puerto Rico, even though I do business in Florida and I do business in uh, California. But I'm very proud of that portfolio in Puerto Rico because it's a great location, Old San Juan. You can see the, the properties. This is uh, close to 100 million there in properties. A lot of people just say, OK, just trust me, I make money. I want to, to see what we have what I personally built, what I built for my investors, etc. And KMAGB is a website that explains to people how I protect myself, how you can do the same for asset protection. I wrote a book called Blue Ocean Opportunities in Commercial Real Estate, and uh, that has been published. It's on Amazon for less than $3. Really, it's a giveaway. I just wanted to share with people how I started and how I actually made it in the business. It's an easy read. Uh, it talks a lot about my history of how I started and how I grew in the business and blue ocean, meaning I found strategies that have no competition. I'll talk about that a little bit today. And um, uh, as opposed to a bloody ocean where you have so much competition, you compete on price and etc. But in commercial real estate and residential, if you find your own way to structure deals, the money is in the structure, not just the strategy. I uh, co-authored a book with uh, Steve Forbes. Uh, I was honored to have that. It's called Successonomics. Look how Steve is so happy to be with me in the picture here. <laughs> anyway, so that was an honor for me. It, it actually, I talk about the 12 steps to succeed. Let's say you're starting with nothing. Maybe you have a job. Maybe you just came new to the United States. Maybe you have a different career and you want to make it. And if you don't want to buy the book, you can actually uh, go on YouTube and put Sharif Medawar 12 steps or Sharif Medawar Successonomics, and you're gonna see a video presentation I did at the Marriott Marquis in New York when he was there to a group of people. It kind of talks to people like how you build the credit, how you you know use a saving, how to acquire the first product, what do you do to actually get to a level where you have multi-million dollar portfolios. Um, Kimmy and Bill had uh, honored me with the opportunity to speak on one of the podcasts before. Maybe you've heard me in the past. I'm the guy in the middle right here. 
uh, on one side the good looking people and the other side not the so good looking people you decide who's <laughs> looking, who's not. I, I kind of made the balance there so that's why I'm in the middle <laughs> they were actually great uh, great speakers it was an incredible opportunity to speak to everybody who listened to different strategies from storage facilities to mobile home parks to discount notes it was really a great uh, event there we enjoyed it and uh, you know they also have the podcast masters of real estate great stuff uh, you can see our photos here when I do my live events. I don't do a lot of live events nowadays, but we do every now and then, maybe every 90 days, we do a good live event. We just finished one in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was an intensive two days on how to set up your own real estate funds. I'm an expert in that field, and we help people set up their own turnkey real estate fund to raise capital, etc. But people uh, have been with us. I've been in the business for over 22 years teaching. I've been investing for over 30 years. I've, I've been around for a while. What I do now, so you know, since COVID, we realized a lot of people needed guidance. They are trying to structure deals. They have questions right when they're doing the deal. So what we do is once a month, we do a Zoom call and people ask the questions and I answer these people who are members of these, what we call commercial real estate deal pro. And um, even though a lot of questions come on residential, on development, asset protection, I answer all the questions that come to us Ashley Jones, as you see her here, she's my vice president. She's been with me since 2003. So it's been 20 years of us hacking away, teaching people, helping people grow. And I'm really privileged to do these calls once a month. You can think about these calls if you need some guidance, because you really can take your game to another level once you're trying to do a deal and you need some answers, or you're trying to figure out what's the best way and you hear some other people's questions. And we've really transformed some people's lives. I have over 2000 video success stories on YouTube itself. I don't know of any other education company that has that. So I'm very proud of that, but know that we do these calls. I want to talk about 2023 and how it brings a lot of commercial and residential opportunities. As you're aware, there has been a lot of layoffs. I mean, we, the latest was KM, uh, KMPG, the, the um, the, the accounting firm, for the first time in its history, they laid off people, 6,000 people. Facebook laid off people. Google laid off people. The only one that has not laid off people now is Apple so far. But the layoffs and the loan defaults will bring a lot of opportunities in all kinds of real estate assets. So you have to be aware of what's going on. But the activities are happening around creative deals. So if you know how to do creative transactions, the lease with option, the subject to, the wraparound mortgages, whether you're buying or selling, that's how you can get into the deals that make financial sense or get out of deals that you can actually have a long tail of income. You can also learn how to assign commercial deals. We have a program called the Joint Venture Program. I'll kind of mention the structure of that program where people can start if they don't have too much credit or they don't know much about commercial real estate, how to start with literally no risk. I will explain a strategy of this as a case study today and you'll be the judge. And we also help people set up their own real estate funds because when you see opportunities and it's below market and you wanna jump on it, but you don't have enough capital or your credit is not all there or you don't have enough uh, substance for the lender to give you the money, believe it or not, you can set up a real estate fund, not just a syndication. Syndication is just for one deal. We teach people to set up a real estate fund whereby you set it up once and you can do different and separate deals just under one structure. So you set up once and you can be set up for life. It's unbelievable. You save a lot of money. You can raise a lot of money. We set it up even as a debt fund, not equity fund. We don't have to pay investors anything on the upside, but I want you to know it's out there and something you can do. You don't need to have a special license or anything. And once you set up a fund and you're able to present to people, we have these opportunities, come together with me, you can take your game to another level completely. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's a bit scary, but that's what happens when you're trying to grow. It's not, it's not easy in the beginning, and then it gets easier because you get better. And so that's very important. We, we help people set up these uh, as turnkey. We give you the private placement memorandum. We show you how to raise the capital, how to find the right assets that cash flow. We even like look at the last point here I'm making. There are ways to buy performing and non-performing mortgage notes. These you can buy them at a discount. Let's say a note is performing at let's say six or seven percent on a commercial property and the lender wants to sell it or a private a lender wants to sell it. You can buy it at a discount and start cash flowing for you at 10 or 12 percent. 
you can keep it for a while then turn around and sell it again you make a huge amount of money and if you're set up with a real estate fund you have immediate cash flow just this is what 2023 and 2024 will be bringing these are some of the assets I'm working on. The property you see right here, the one with the clock. I have a big retail tenant. I love mixed use. Mixed use, you have downstairs retail. So these people sign for 10 to 15 years with a corporate guarantee. That means they guarantee the lease. This is lease. The lease here is Diamond International. This is an old San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's the corner of Fortaleza Street and San Justo Street. And that corner, that property, it's worth millions of dollars. Basically, the tenant downstairs pays me thousands and thousands per month as a lease, and they pay the property tax, insurance, and maintenance. It's called a triple net lease. Upstairs, there is an entrance on the side. I don't think you could see it from here. And you can go upstairs. We have one, two, three floors with a big open space upstairs where you have a view of the bay of Old San Juan where the cruise ships arrive. And this has been approved for 30-room hotel. And the government of Puerto Rico, the tourism department, gives you 40% tax credit. So if, if buying the building and, and rehabbing to put a hotel costs you $10 million between the purchase and the rehab, you submit all this to the tourism office, they audit all your numbers, they give you back $4 million. That means you invest 10, which is practically all loans from the credit lines from the banks, because the banks know that the risk is very low because you have the tax credit. You pay, you pay the 10 million with the credit lines and all this, the value of the building becomes 14, 15, and you submit to the government for tax credit, you get back $4 million, literally a certificate of tax credit that you sell to the bank at 92 or 90 cents on the dollar. So your total cost is six, the property is worth 12 to 14 to 15 million. Great stuff. You have to learn how to put the pieces together. These tax credits exist in many parts of the country, in, in, in many opportunities that you have incentive programs. Uh, right here is another mixed use building. We took this building, we put Sunglass Hut, took the property, took the property for a million nine, put Sunglass Hut at 20,000 a month of property, increased in value having this long term tenant with a corporate guarantee to $4 million. Here's a property in San Francisco. In my fund, we do luxury residential homes in San Francisco. I showed you the website, mixif.com. You can see these properties, we buy them for three to four million. We add square footage, we take the basement, basement, we dig it down a couple feet, expand, use that space, and it costs us four, five hundred dollars square foot to make it happen. We exit at two thousand dollars square foot. Two thousand dollars square feet, two thousand square feet, we make three million dollars profit on these properties. Amazing, incredible stuff. It's a lot of work, but then if you have a fund, if you know how to put the pieces together, if you have some guidance to ask questions, you can do what I do and, and greater stuff you can do. It all depends on your market. I was talking to a guy in Indianapolis, he found a hotel an apartment building, pennies on the dollar, it's owned by a real estate fund. They went upside down. They want to sell it. They want to carry the financing. They're making it so easy for him to make it happen. All he has to do now is get some answers on how to do the deal creatively, how to put the pieces together. He was on the call last. Uh, we do the calls on the second Saturday of each month. Last month, he got all the pieces together. Everybody was listening. Everybody was learning. And it's exciting for me because I get to see also what's out there. So how do I know that stuff and what structure I use? I have actually applied even for a patent for it in 2003. It's called the FACTS system. You can see it right here. It's the FACTS is the acronym for how to find or finding, analyzing, controlling, and timing, as well as strategizing the real estate investing. And you can do it. You can do a lot of it online. You can see right here, I'm the inventor, Sharif Medawar. And you can see the actual attorney's firm, Rubenstein Law Group. You can know from the name alone, they're really good. So this is good stuff. Fact system works like this. How to find the best deals and great tenants to occupy them. Commercial real estate, the tenants paying that rent, whether it's multi-units, storage facility, single tenant, industrial, that tenant paying you that, more, that, that rent makes the payment to the bank and gives you the cash flow, gives you that cash on cash. You're able to pay investors, able to pay yourself. If it's your own deal, you're able to get cash flow and the debt gets paid down through time by the actual tenants. The tenants and that cash flow is the oxygen in the financial world. Finding the right deals and getting the right tenants in them is hugely valuable. 
Number two, how to analyze the numbers. You have to learn how to quickly analyze numbers. It's just not only the numbers on the property, but the local trend, what's happening in that market. A hotel, for example, you look like, a oh, this hotel is doing very well. It's 90% occupancy at $130 average daily rate. But then you compare to the market, you find the market is running at 95% occupancy at 150 average daily rate called ADR. See, it's not just the numbers on a property, the intrinsic value, but the extrinsic value. What's happening in that market? And we teach that, we help people guide them into how to analyze these numbers and where to find the answers and the solutions. A lot can be found online, but if you don't know what you're looking for and how to understand what you're looking at, you're not going to be able to move to the next one, which is controlling the property. How to negotiate the deal to create something that's a win-win. You want always a win-win, not a win-kill. A win-win is good karma. A win-win makes the deal go through without any hitches, without lawsuits and problems. You don't want bad karma in business. Negotiating and putting it under contract. You don't have the deal under contract. You got nothing. You got an idea. Okay. When you get it under contract, you can go and time the process of the due diligence. Most mistakes are done because people don't know how to do due diligence. I created checklists. I mean, even if you're in a hurry, you go through the checklist, you can't miss a thing. And the financing. Are you going to do a syndication? Are you raising capital for just for that deal, grouping investors together, doing it legally to file your documents with the SEC? Do you have a real estate fund where you head up once and people that want to do business with you, you tell them, I have a structure already. We don't have to negotiate things. This is how I do business. You want to do business with you? Come in this way. I pay you that. Or are you going to go get a loan from the bank? Or are you combining this and that? You see, very important to time the process to close. Once you close the deal, this is the fun part because you can strategize to take the business the, of the property to take the income to the next level. You get a management company that can manage it, the daily operation, and then you work on taking it to its highest and best use. That's my fact system. That's what we use. That's what guides people. Even when they set up their own funds, when they do their deeds, they know what to start with and the step-by-step -step recipe to make it happen. Now, people ask me, okay, should if you like residential, love residential. You like commercial, I like residential and commercial, but I like commercial more. I'll tell you why. Just listen to me from, I know you're reading this, but just listen to me. In residential, you're usually looking for comparable sales and trying to find something below the comparable sales. The area is selling at 500,000, you found something at 400. Wow, I got a winner. I can wholesale it, I can buy it and sell it, I can buy it and fix it, I can buy it and do it. I'm with you, this is wonderful. In commercial, however, I can take something at full value I'm talking to a broker. I'm not looking for a distressed sale. I'm talking to a broker. I can buy it at full value, but I can bring a better tenant. I can change the use. I can add antennas on the roof. I can put advertisement on the side. Next thing you know, I've added the value through income. And these future streams of income give you economic immortality. You can after that refinance cash out and you have infinite rates of returns. So I love commercial real estate because it gives you the income stream, that gives you, that gives you retirement, makes time your friend, gives you asset appreciation. As the rental income increases, the asset increases in value. Replacement cost alone is going to help you get there. You have a lot of tax benefits from depreciation to write-offs to, to doing 1031 exchanges. When you sell your all your money forward, it's low to no hassle management. If you get properties like triple net, like the sunglass hut that I explained to you, I don't have to manage anything. They do the direct deposit. They've been with me 16 years. They do direct deposits in my bank account. I can be sitting, talking to you. I don't have to worry about somebody's gonna call me, they slip and fall. It is no such thing. They give me, they indemnify me in these locations. If you have an apartment building or a hotel, you can get a hotel management company, you can get an apartment building management company. Some people get so into the minutia of managing pennies and they trip on pennies on their way to dollars. Okay. Low to no liability. You can structure them in the proper LLC, strip the equity. We have a whole program on how to protect yourself. I've mastered that. We have what's called the ultimate asset protection program. You be the judge. Watch it at kmagb.com. Okay. Privacy. You can own, own these assets in LLCs. You can own them in separate uh, trust, etc. Total privacy. Longer term leases. A lot of these longer term tenants, they want they're afraid of inflation. They don't want you to increase the leases at 5 and 6% per year. So they sign the 10, 15 year lease and you're done. You can turn your back, go look for another deal, go travel, go do something fun. So bigger tenants are attracted to better properties. 
So what is scaring you is actually the answer. And how do you put the Ds for bigger tenants? Get the answer, get the right structure, you will attract the money, attract the banks, and attract the big tenants. This is how you put the Ds together. And if the deal, you put a deal under contract, if you can put the pieces together in commercial real estate, you have like 45 days to walk away with no risk. Just walk away, you have no downside. Lower cost, because you're able to actually get these multi-units where your cost is lower because you have a lot of people paying, you have lower vacancy factor, et cetera. So you have the bigger returns. So how do you buy your first or your next commercial property? There are different classes of assets. So you have apartment building class A, class B, class C. You want the class B that you can improve and take to class A, take it to its highest and best use. What you need is knowledge and a bit of creativity. The more training you have, the more creativity you come up with, the more ideas you come up with. You have the vision, but if you don't know what to look for, how can you come up with ideas? The last three years have had huge trend shifts on various real estate markets. You know, we had delays in construction permits. We had less supplies. There was nothing available. You had less workers wanting to work. You had lower inventory on the market. It was a complete chaos. And then after all that, we had high inflation, increased interest rates like never in history, and a lot of confusion. Guess what? That's where you can make the money. And you don't have to look at the entire national statistics of whatever. The opportunities are right around you in your own market. All you need is some guidance, a little bit of some creative ways to do the deals. Now, I'm going to give you some examples in a mo moment, but if you have your own real estate fund, you can raise capital and deploy it in these creative deals that you can structure to add value or to get them below market. So how do you do that? Three steps. I want you to focus on a market your market within maybe a five mile radius, focus on a specific type of property. You want to do residential, fine. Maybe you want to look at the four bedroom, two and a half bathrooms. Maybe you want to look at industrial properties. Maybe you want to look at single tenant retail, those standalone buildings that are retail properties. Once you focus on a market and focus on specific type of, type of properties, the next thing is you'll understand the values. You're going to realize when this type of property goes on the market, it sits, the days on market are 45 days. Wow, now they're sitting 30 days. It's moving higher, it's moving faster. Or now it's taking 60 days. I can make better offers, I can get them for a lower price. Oh, they're listed at this, selling at lower. They're listed at certain price, selling at higher. You will see, you will understand the values and you'll go from being scared to move forward to being excited about making your offers and locking in the deals. You see, there are trends that are actually picking up steam and you need to understand how to make it happen. You notice our homes in the last couple of years with COVID have become our offices, our schools, our gyms. You can look at repositioning properties and change the use, which is extremely profitable. You've seen some malls that get converted into warehouses or even you've seen hotels converted into apartments. It's just you're only limited by your knowledge, creativity and ability to communicate with people. So some residential in destination locations have also been converted to nightly short-term rentals like Airbnb, etc. I made a killing in so many areas where I actually got these long-term converted into short-term. I staged them. I actually put great furniture in there, advertise them, put people in charge, step back, and the thing is humming, making us 20 to 30% more than we we're making long-term. Market shifts, market turns, I can get this stop and I can go long-term again. Again, knowledge, training, creativity. Retail revamp, you know, focusing on single tenant building can get you these big national trends and national brands that are actually trying to find locations. You know, like, uh, believe it or not, Chick-fil-A is selling on average $5 million per location. You think if you get a good location under contract and you call Chick-fil-A to get them into a property, they're going to mind if you want 15,000 a month or, or 18,000 a month, they're making 5 million a year. They just want the right location. Do you know how to identify the right property? Do you know what kind of traffic you need? Do you know what kind of negotiation for the letter of intent? Well, how are you going to get there if you don't have the knowledge? If all you know is finding a residential home, finding it below market to try to flip it, and you're in a, not in a blue ocean opportunity, you're in a bloody ocean because everybody's competing in the same areas. Okay, industrial is going into flex space. Flex space where you have little retail in the front and they have their warehouses in the back. This is happening coast to coast. Uh, you have grade malls that are B and C, a little bit less. They're being repositioned 
They put supermarkets in there. They put storage facilities in there. Storage facilities continue to do very well. It's a great asset. And now it's practically all automated. You can go online, reserve a space, get to the gate, enter the code they gave you, get to the location, store your stuff, and they have your credit card. And they, but people have so much stuff. It's crazy. And that's what happened with storage facilities. Um, I like rent payments coming higher and higher. I was just looking at places in Georgia just today with a real estate fund manager that is a student of mine. And she blew my mind away showing me that in Gainesville, Georgia, not Gainesville, Florida, Gainesville, Florida is also growing like crazy, but Gainesville, Gainesville uh, uh, Georgia, imagine small homes are renting at $3,400 a month when less than three years ago, they were going at $1,200, $1,300 a month. That's where the market is going with some of these residential. Know your market, focus on the backyard. I want to give you an example of looking at residential and, 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 and then thinking commercial. I want to give you an example. I hope you can see, you can see my flip chart. Okay, I'm going to just do a little drawing here because I get too excited. Okay, so I want to give you an example. I, a while back, I saw two-way street that was, can you see this? Can you see yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was a corner property, a residential home, and it said Coldwell Banker for sale. And it was a Friday morning and it was open house. And it said free cookies, milk, and bananas. Open house. I said, you know what? I'm going to go in. If I don't buy the house, I get free cookies. I get a banana. Why not? Pulled up my car, got in. Sure enough, the house smelled so good with the cookies. There was kind of a heavy set broker standing there protecting the cookies. I'm trying to reach over. He's like, bro. He said, excuse me, are you pre-approved? Are you pre-approved? I said, listen, I'm very interested in the house. How much? He said, 550,000. I said, okay, it sounds good, but the problem is I can hear traffic, motorcycles and all this. This is, this is crazy. You want too much money. Of course, I'm trying to negotiate. And he said, look, sir, we just sold a similar home at 575. The owners are sitting in the backyard. They're in a hurry. This is the price. There's no negotiation. I said, all right, here's my offer, 550 full price. You have, with no negotiation, this was in California, this is no negotiation, you have 14 days to actually do inspection, change your mind, no obligation to buy. Put it under contract, he got it signed, I took my copies, wrote a check for the escrow, and I said, I'll be back. I went to the city planning and zoning department. I gave him the address, 1554 Murguia Avenue with Scott Boulevard, hey, can I rezone this? They looked in the paperwork and all this. They said, we can give you conditional rezoning. I wanted to rezone it from single family residential to office space commercial. I can go from renting it at 2,400 a month as a home to renting it per square foot at 4,800 a month. And the tenants will pay me the taxes, insurance, and maintenance. When I called the broker back on Monday, I said, listen, on Friday after I wrote the offer, I went to the city planning. I got what I want. I want to remove, I want you to remove your sign. I want to put my sign because I want to put for rent right here. He said, okay, remove the contingencies. That means you don't have any more conditions. You just go get a loan and buy it. And we put a sign and I said, this home is approved for office space. If interested, call me and I put my phone number. It was not a good property for residential because of the traffic noise, but it was a great property for office space because of the traffic. It's like free advertisement. I had so many phone calls. It was unbelievable. I had phone calls, I had phone calls from farmers insurance, I had phone calls from attorneys. I had a CPA firm calling me. They want to move there because they're paying on a big office building, triple net. They said, we would love to be on a busy street, put our own sign, CPA firm travel agencies, et cetera, et cetera. And guess what happened? I even got a call from a psychic. I remember she called me and I said, ma'am, this is um, a single family, but it's being rezoned right now. We're gonna get the paperwork in just a couple of weeks and I'm gonna close on the property. She said, I would love to be here. I've been a psychic for 18 years. I'm the best. How much do you want? I told her, well, you guess. She got very upset. She said, well, I'm good, but I'm not that good. She hung up. But it's okay. We rented it to divorce attorneys. Divorce attorneys in California, they never, ever run out of business. You know, 54% chance of divorce. So it was three attorneys. They got the property. It actually, when I showed the appraiser when they came in that we have a pending lease at 4,800 plus, they paid the triple net tax insurance maintenance because office space, the property appraised at 715. 
it should have appraised at 800 some and i called the bank i said i'm not happy with that appraisal they said oh you can re you can actually dispute it and then you go into this we said i said i don't have time we closed on the deal practically very little down and the property was cash flowing like crazy can you do that again can you do it on another corner look residential think commercial this cash flow this lease was signed they wanted to sign 10 years but i signed for five because i figured on year six which i was right about it as the inflation continues you can actually jack up these prices i'm going to give you a second case study i'm going to give you a second one i put these on the powerpoints because i was all excited i could have done like six case studies but the time does not help me uh, you get a lot of that stuff when we do the commercial real estate uh, deal pro calls on every second Saturday of the month at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, which is 10 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. And I'm always traveling. Right, right now I'm in Puerto Rico. In a few days I'll be in California. It's like you never know. But I'm always on time for that second Saturday every month. Case study number two, I, wanted, I want you to think of this QSR. QSR is quick service restaurants. Just imagine this. Imagine you're driving on a two-way busy street and there's a standalone building, just standalone, all by itself. It's a vacant building. It used to have maybe Jack in the Box, Starbucks, whatever it used to have, maybe some franchisee, some mom and pop operation. And it says, let's say available. That means if you want to buy it, make an offer. If you want to lease it, talk to the broker, etc. I don't know if you can see very well. You guys can see okay? Give me a thumbs up. Yes? Yep. Yeah. Good, okay. good, good. And uh, let's say you call the broker and the broker says, yeah, we want to sell it and we want, um, I don't know, we want 875,000. Of course, you're going to say, oh, no, that's too much, but we're willing to, to buy it. We'll give, make you an offer at 800,000. So now you write the contract, 800,000. You got it locked in under contract standard 45 to 60 days but let's say 45 days for due diligence you got the property under contract at 800 000. you know what you do for due diligence i train people to start picking up the phone and smiling and dialing to call these national tenants you call the jack in the box you call a jeweler company you call a bank you call all based on the location and the neighboring tenants and you tell them hi my name is sharif Madawar. And uh, we have this property at 123 El Camino Real, and we have traffic here of 25,000 cars a day. The neighboring tenant, there is a Jumba Juice in the corner. There is a Starbucks over here. There's a gas station across. There is a CVS pharmacy over here. Would love to have you as a tenant. If you're interested, you call me at this number. You're going to take a video of the place. You're going to send it to them. There's a whole specific method to do it. And all you need is one tenant to call you back. And you have 45 days to smile and dial and talk to these tenants. One tenant calls you back and say, I'm interested. Let's say it's uh, Subway. See, quick service restaurants. They're growing. They, they've done very well during COVID. They're like anti-problems, okay? So what happens now, they're going to sign with you a letter of intent. You're going to tell them, you want a lease here? Yes, I need a 10-year lease. I need you to pay a triple net. We need 100000 a year for the lease. That's 8300 a month. Then it says, okay. Send me the letter of intent, you send it to them, start um, subway, 10 year lease, uh, triple net. That means they pay tax insurance and maintenance on top of the lease. The lease is 100,000 a year. You're going to give them, let's say, two months free. You're going to give them uh, the opportunity to come in here with a 3% escalation per year. You can do more, but let's say this. I mean, they can sign 15 year lease, makes it more valuable. But now you have the deal under contract at 800,000 and you have a national tenant with a corporate guarantee. That means that lease will be guaranteed by the entire corporation that's publicly traded with 36,000 locations worldwide, Subway. And you can see many of them are like insanely wealthy, deep, deep pockets. I was dealing with Crocs. Crocs, would, they make 1.2 billion a year. Crocs, and these shoes, like, they don't get ruined. Have you ever bought a Crocs, a pair of Crocs? Anyway, I got too excited. Corporate guarantee, making now the property, does it increase or decrease in value? It's vacant. You got it under contract at 800. It's going to be occupied. Tenant is ready to come in. They want to actually come in. Can you go to the bank and tell the bank, I have a contract right here to buy it at 800,000. And I have an agreement here, letter of intent from this national company that's publicly traded, ready to come in. They'll probably lease from us and sublease to a franchisee. But I don't care. I have the corporate guarantee from the main company, from the mother company, the main one. And that corporate guarantee is worth 800 million to a billion dollars.
The bank says, okay, this property at the $100,000, 6% cap. Like if you have a capitalization rate, that property now would be worth 1,667,000. You can actually do the math. Take $100,000, take 100,000, do like it on your, on your calculator. Um, you take your calculator and you put 100,000, that's the lease per year, divided by 6% cap, 0 0.06. That means whoever is going to invest has a capital that wanted to invest at 6% because you have great tenant that's going to keep paying you. That property will be worth 1,666. Let's say 1,667. We don't like that 666 number, right? And But then you have it under contract at 800. So what's the upside? The upside is over $800,000. How many years are you gonna live? How much you wanna to wait to make the big money? This is one of the strategies that make me very, very wealthy in a very short period of time. Do you think I did it by saving? By listening to Susie Orman? Uh, why don't you put your money in a 401k and let it compound? I mean, are, are you kidding me? You, you get a property like this. I, I'm gonna show you how to become wealthy. You get a property like this and you do this. If you do one a year, because you're lazy, you're watching TV, Netflix takes time. I understand you have, you have six kids, seven kids. I understand, okay? But let's just say you did that. You put it under contract here. As soon as you line up the tenant, the property goes up in value. What if you don't? Let's create a problem, let's create a problem. Let's say you called for 44 days and not one tenant called you back. Are you obligated to buy it? No. You just call the broker who listed the property and you say, I want to thank you. The property doesn't meet my criteria. It didn't pass my due diligence period. I'm out. You put 10,000, 15,000 in escrow. You put 5,000. I work with sometimes we do a joint venture program where I give people the proof of funds. I, I literally give them proof of funds from my real estate fund. I have millions always sitting. I'm not just talking. I'm doing it. You can see some success stories on YouTube. This is not some fantasy. I've been doing it for years. Okay. And what actually we do is we give them the proof of fund, we give them this list of the national tenants, we give them the pitch what to tell the national tenants. We have 4,500 national tenants. That program is so powerful. And you can listen on Saturdays, people putting these together, what questions they have, they have what kind of issues they ran into. But if for 44 days you couldn't line up one tenant, call the broker, walk away, you get your money back by law. It's it's due diligence period is no obligation to buy. You have no downside, huge upside. This is what they call an asymmetric relationship. But here's what happened. You put the property under contract, you lined up the tenant, that's the first way to become wealthy. You just wait. Now you get a loan. So let me get a uh, uh, red, uh, red ink here. You get a loan. What happens as time goes by? The loan keeps getting paid down. And guess what happened with the 3% escalation? The property value keeps going up. That's the second way to become wealthy. Don't do anything, you, you're done. You just put the tenant and you got the loan and you, you're done. The, 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 the tenant pays you direct deposit, the bank takes a direct payment and the rest is yours. How beautiful is that? This is called sit on your butt investing. Don't do anything. Then before six months before expiration, like nine and a half years into it, the tenant calls you and they're gonna tell you one of two things. We would like to renew for another 10 years. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna jack up the rent. Because there is inflation. I pray for inflation. I got so many of these. I have 31 buildings like this. I go to church every Sunday. I light 31 candles. God, let there be inflation. Why? Because when I renew the lease, it goes through the roof. We started at 100,000 a year. And then 3% is 103. Then 106 something. It compounds on itself. 109. I think you're getting this. Imagine 10 years later now. So now, this is the third way to become wealthy. I renew the lease for another 10 years. And guess what happens? 11 year, the 12th year, it, it actually increases again. That's the fourth way to become wealthy. This is wealthy, wealthier, wealthiest. And then I don't know what the next word is. It doesn't exist in English because the guy who wrote the dictionary was in residential real estate, not in commercial. All while what? While the debt keeps getting paid down by the tenants and the dollar devalues, so it decreases not just in amount, but in purchase power. You become more powerful. That's how the banks lost their butt. Because they were giving loans at 2%, 2.5% when inflation was thick. Those who borrowed made a killing. How do you think? I made a lot of money the last few years. Is that unfair? No, you just have to understand the system because there is a, there is a fence. You're on this side getting hammered, 
and paying taxes, or you go on this side, get into real estate, understand how to put these together, how to structure them the right way and make a killing. And a killing you will make, because all you have to do is do the part in the beginning, and then the structure carries you forward. And that is an asset you can pass on to your kids. You, you want to send the kids to college, refinance, cash out, and the tenants will continue paying. I just refinanced, cashed out $7 million. What do you think I did with the seven million? Let me give you a few choices. I bought some Bitcoin. I bought some stocks and options. I went gambling. Or I bought some more real estate. Isn't it obvious? You buy the assets and the assets keep performing. So this is case study number two. And by the way, the other thing is, after nine and a half years, they can tell you, you know what? We're not going to renew. We're shutting down. We're leaving. We found a bigger location. We're expanding, whatever it is. And guess what? You have a rehab place up and running with all the clientele of Subway. Can you call Quiznos? Can you call another sandwich place? Can you find another quick service restaurant? Inflation alone has taken the building to a higher price. And now you can increase not just to like 115, 120, maybe you can go to 130,000 starting the new lease with a new tenant. I have done this for years over and over and over. And you can do it in so many different types of properties. Okay, so you got the point. The key question is, is there distressed property and products today? This is one of my topics for my next commercial real estate deal pro mastermind, uh, Zoom calls, which everybody gets in, everybody has a voice, everybody can put their comments. Ashley's with me, she takes the comments. You can ask the questions before. I am ready for you, I make them. I love these calls. They take me even to the next level. We're working on analyzing trends in different areas, and I'll share that with you when we're doing these calls. Uh, we do brainstorming. I answer most of the questions. I actually probe your mind to actually start thinking differently, like gymnastics for your brain, to start understanding differences between uh, structuring deals as wraparound. Why subject to sometimes and quite often does not work and you have to do different structure. I'll explain that specifically why the banks resent these subject to. So I want you to reach out to Ashley at cmrei.com. CMREI is Sharif Meadowar Real Estate Investing. It's not just about the training, it's about investing. I want the action. The other thing is, if you can send an email, you prefer to call, we're gonna be available for you for two hours taking the calls, 844-720-1031. 844-720-1031 or email Ashley. Ashley is A-S-H-L-E-E -E at CMREI.com. So I'm on these calls every month, we answer the questions, no matter what, we talk about structuring the deals, we talk about answering questions, we talk about trends and what's going on in the market, your market and what's happening. So if you're ready to invest in commercial real estate, I will throw in some incredible bonuses for you. Those who wanna do this, there are so many different types of commercial properties that have done trainings to get people to understand how to find each different type, how to analyze the numbers, how to negotiate each different type, where to get the loans for each different type of property, and how you can create strategies that take each different type of property to its highest and best use. You can take a screenshot of this one. You can make so much money with hotels and motels. You can make so much money with gas stations, recreation facilities, assisted living, etc. So if you're not sure where to start, to actually increase your knowledge, join us on the commercial real estate mastermind calls. If you already know how to make it happen, you wanna take your game to another level, contact us and let us take you to there. What I'm gonna do for you is those who are gonna join me, we have an university access to learn the system to invest in commercial real estate. These are modules, these are trainings I've done that we put them for you online. So those who join will have access to this. You have exclusive checklist because I don't want you to miss anything when you're doing your investments, when you're doing your due diligence, and then you get on these live calls so you're on top of it. The calls, I'm there answering questions. I mean, this guy, look here in the lower right corner, he had a full head of hair when we started. An hour later, he lost his hair. He was blown away. I mean, this was incredible stuff. I love talking on these calls. I love explaining to people specifically on their strategies. One deal, I always believe one deal can change your life. So enroll in my mastermind, we'll give you for 2,997 monthly live deal analysis and questions and answers from me. A network to brainstorm on all your deals. We are there on the call. Sometimes people participate and add value to what we're doing. The actual commercial real estate investing quick start kit. I have a quick start kit that gives you the steps, what you need to do exactly how to make it happen. 
commercial real estate deal making virtual course. This is a course I have done. It's a two days intensive. You're going to have it. It's a video in a live classroom where you're going to actually be able to rewind some parts, understand the details and the examples I give. Resources and checklists available for you, including legal documents. I always tell you, check with your attorney, but I'm going to give you some guidelines because you want to see. I have, for example, a leasing contract cost me $8,000 through the year because I deal with the biggest tenants. That's what I want you to see. That's what I want you to use. And I'm going to throw in a bonus, the two day secrets to raising capital. This was an incredible training I've done. It was very successful. And I'm giving you the best deal for Bill and Kimmy's people which is going to be not 2,997, it's going to be $997. Actually, it, it blew the system so much that it didn't even show up. Anyway, so why invest in commercial real estate now? And how? Do you want to see the opportunities? You understand the numbers so you can see how these uncertainties in the market can create opportunities for you. So get the right foundation for the education, understand the commercial real estate trends, what's going on, understand them even with discount notes. Bonus not, number one, I'll give you the university access to the videos. This is the 12 different type of commercial properties training. This training was $3,000 live training. We took the best parts. We created it in a module format where you can see, I don't know if you can see here, step by step by different type. You want to understand how to do apartments, how to find them, the for sale by owners, the foreclosures from banks, the government deals that went away and how you can find them and then how to analyze them, how to control them, how to actually finance them and how to raise capital for them and how to take them to their highest and best use. Like, like taking an apartment building, changing it into condos, selling half of it and keeping the other half free and clear, that alone can change your mind and your life. Storage facilities, hospitality, land development, eco-friendly deals, how you can take any property to its maximum use with the eco-friendly stuff. Retail buildings, one of my favorite. Office and medical, senior facilities, mobile homes, warehouses, parking garages, and gas stations. 12 different types using my fax system that is actually patented, that actually it helps you follow a formula so you don't make a mistake. Also, I'll give you a second bonus, which is the secrets to raising capital unlimited capital, there are exemptions by the Securities and Exchange Commission that makes it very simple, very powerful for you to actually go from just doing a partnership to a joint venture to truly setting up a real estate fund that takes you to the next and best use. This training is $2,000. It's again a live training. You're going to have access to it. You can rewind parts. You will become a master of this. I've had people tell me, We've taken this training. How long did it take you to put it together? This training is years of my experience raising the capital, deploying it in California for my luxury properties, San Francisco. We do luxury high end on the Gold Coast on Billionaire's Row. And we've been doing this for 14 years. It shows you how I do developments in Florida from the ground up. It shows you how I do apartment buildings. It shows you exactly how I have the portfolio have the portfolio in Old San Juan, Puerto Rico under the fund and how you can actually benefit from these structures. So commercial deal pro mastermind, you get all this good stuff, the quick starting kit, the, the commercial deal making virtual training, 20 hours, success oriented team, how to actually set up your team to, to succeed, expert training, all this available for you. You just watch the trainings, watch the parts you like, you have the checklist and all this, 12 months of monthly mastermind calls, second Saturday of each month. And if you can't attend, I want you to know something, you can't attend, it's archived. So you can go and listen to it. It's, it's on your website, we give you a special website. You can see the old trainings. You can see and listen to how I listen to the question. I explain the details, I give the formula. I'm a man of formulas. I don't wing it, I use formulas and that's how I succeed. And you're gonna learn from the Raising Capital video, Syndication Joint Venture Partnership, that's the $2,000. The one year access for the Commercial Real Estate Roundtable, that's the roundtable training that I told you breaks down for you how to do any type of property and how to take it to its highest and best use. That package is $8,000. We're selling it. You can go to the website and see, we're selling the stuff for $3,000, we're selling it for $2,000, selling this at three, right here with Bill and Kimmy. I've known them, they've helped me grow. I want to actually contribute to what they're doing to their own database and you can enroll now for $997. This price 
This offer is good for two hours. If you want to sleep on it tomorrow morning, you can pay a little bit more. You can get some, some sleep. You can get rested, pay a little bit more, whatever works for you. Okay, so love doing these calls with you. You will find similar coachings, not at the level of depth that I have and the experience I have. You don't believe me, go on YouTube and look at what I present. Listen to the success stories. Look at the comments that people leave. Other trainings are 10 to 15,000 a year. I'm offering you all this at $997, less than $1,000, okay? Why? I want to share. I want to grow my database. I want to grow the knowledge out there. It helps everybody. It improves the market. So let's get started. Those that are willing to do this, I want to give you the number again, 844-720-1031. And um, it's all right there for you, nine, nine, $997. Uh, for the next two hours uh, or call um, 844-720-1031 or email ashley a-s-h-l-e-e -E, at cmrei.com is there a way i can take some questions uh, bill is, is it uh, okay if i do that what do you think yeah, go for it man okay of course we unmute people yep i have some questions here ready they've been yes. emailing in while you were going uh the first question is what does renewal options mean in triple net properties? Awesome question. A renewal option is, remember I showed you on the chart, they have a 10 year lease. They may say, listen, we're willing to sign with you a 10 year lease, but we would like to have an option to renew for an extra five. So sometimes you get these big companies, we're talking to Walgreens and Walgreens said, you know what we're willing to do? We're willing to demolish the building, build a new one, and we're going to sign for a 25 year lease, but we want to do 15 year and then an option to renew five years, five years, five years. We love it. They're going to build the building. And after that period of time, the building becomes ours to the owner. So that's just an option to renew the lease because they don't want to leave. They spend a lot of money rehabbing the place to their own uh, standards. So they ask for options to renew. Cool. What else? All right. The next question is what cap rate should we be looking for in the current economy in this market? Well, okay. So the cap rate, it depends on the type of property. It depends on the location and the tenant. So it's actually something that I teach in extreme depth because it can throw you off. But the key thing is understand if you're going to pay the bank right now, 6%, you want the cap rate to be higher than 6% because you want the income to be higher than your payment or you want to get a payment structure that is actually longer. So you try to get 30 years, 40 years, which some of these loans exist like this. You can also find deals from people who got loans at three or 4% before and make a deal with them, give them some money, take over that existing loan. And actually you can do these through wraparound mortgage. You can do it through a lease with option to buy. I don't recommend the subject to for these type of deals, because if you change ownership on the deed, the bank will call the loan. Uh, uh, despite whatever you hear out there on YouTube or from other people, I'm telling you subject to will not work for these. So you can structure the deals where if the, if the deal is less than 6%, so it's like 5%, but it's a great opportunity. You're going to try to structure it creatively with the seller. And you're going to look for how can I increase the income? So all of a sudden you get it at maybe 5% cap rate. That means capitalization. That means if you have a million, that capital, capital of a million will be returning 5%. That's a 5% cap. You have a million dollar, you paid cash for the property. It's net operating income is 50,000. That's 5% cap capital return. And, but you're going to buy it because you can change the tenant. You can add space. You can build the second floor. You can change the layout. And next thing you know, you can charge more or add another income stream. And now the property is making instead of 50,000 years, 70,000 year, 80,000 years. So now you're able to sustain the property keeps going up in value that keeps getting paid down. You can even refinance cash out your down payment. And that's how you make it happen. You want more than 6% cap. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. Do tenants have options on expiration on term of triple net lease agreements? Only if you negotiate for the, with the tenant to offer them an option to renew. I don't like to give them an option to renew. I say, I'm going to sign for 10 years. You want to make sure your future is going to be good because you're going to spend money changing the kitchen or putting a drive through or whatever. Let's sign for a 15 year lease. Now I get them for the 15 year lease because that escalation is only 3%. Because the tenants get very scared that when it's time to renew, 
you're going to jack up the rent 10, 15 percent, then you're going to tell them, hey, it's inflation. So they say, well, can I have an option to renew? This way they're in control of what the increase is going to be. That's when I get them and I say, well, commit to longer. Why do I want the longer commitment? Because when I go to the bank and I say I have a 15 year lease from a national tenant with a corporate guarantee, the bank is ready to, for you to sign right there and then, even if your credit is not the best, even if you're not resident or citizen of the United States. Do you know that non citizen, non US citizen can buy in the United States, set up an LLC and you can get a loan? I, I was meeting with a mortgage uh, uh, broker. And there is no requirement for a social security. There are these actual specific loans that they're giving that actually called the uh, NACA loans. Look them up, 100% loan, no social security. Check it out, you blow your mind away. Knowledge, action and network. That's what's gonna get you there. Okay, next question. Next question, can you wholesale commercial real estate? Of course you can wholesale commercial real estate. I just explained to you one of my favorite strategies right here. So let's say you become a joint venture partner with me. That's a whole separate program, but I just want you to understand how to do wholesaling. So you learn, I give you a training to show you how to identify the single tenant buildings, those that are standalone buildings. And then you get in, you have a checklist. There are 15 criteria for what you're looking for. When you're ready to make an offer, I give you the proof of funds. So when you call a broker, you say, I am working with a real estate fund called Mixif. I have the proof of fund. You make the offer in your name and or mix it, which is my fund that's been running for 14 years. They can go on the website. They can see it on sec.gov. We have 100 million plus in assets. And now you have a proof of fund here. We have a million dollars ready. We're buying this at 800,000. So now you put it under contract, use maybe 5,000 of your own money. But the proof of fund is my fund. And you represent the fund in these deals. You put it under contract. I give you the tenant list. You start smiling and dialing. All you need is one tenant interested. When the tenant is interested, you email me and you say, Sharif, email me, not somebody else. Email me directly and say, Sharif, I have a tenant interested. They want to talk on Wednesday or Friday. I reply, we set up a Zoom call. We go on the phone with them. You listen to me, it's taped. And we actually negotiate the details of the deal, the letter of intent. You're going to hear me how I negotiate it. How I actually give them the terms here, take from here, put it here. And you will see, I sometimes offer them even what's called tenant improvement. I'll kick in a $70,000 for you to change the kitchen, to change the extractor, to do this, this, this. And we lock them into the deal and you get paid. You assign the deal to me. That's a wholesale. You didn't have to, you're 5,000, you get it back. On that upside, the 800,000, 867,000 upside, because you locked it in at 800. Now the value goes up based on a multiplier from the actual rent we negotiated with them. You get on that upside of 867,000, you get 10%, you get $86,000 as assignment fee. It's paid to you through escrow. And if we sign them for 15 years, you get 25% from the upside. Look at the success stories. Go on YouTube right now and put the success story, put Sharif Marawar and Shane, S-H-A-N-E. He did his first deal, he didn't want to assign it to me because he figured out the pieces and he set up a real estate fund. So he got the deal at 400,000 under contract, lined up the big tenant. When he actually made the deal, he walked away with $950,000, almost a millionaire in one deal. Shane Sell did it in, in the Atlanta, greater Atlanta area. He's a very shy, quiet person. And he put the deal together. Why? I gave him the tenant list. I gave him the, the criteria for the property and I help coordinate the pieces. This can be done by anybody. We've been doing it for years. How do, you, how do you think you can compress the time to make the most money? You put the package together. You don't go find an empty property. You're not a broker. And if you're a broker, I have like 30% of my students in the joint venture that I want to wholesale. They make more money. If you sell this property, you're going to make what? 3% commission, 2% commission? You're going to make 16,000? You want to make 16? You want to make 20? Or you want to make 86,000 to to, to 200,000 on the assignment fee. Yeah, of course you can assign commercial. It's a lot easier because the, the deal is assigned based on the, the numbers, not based on wholesaling. Hey, this is after repair value and whatever. You can do that with residential. This is a lot better and a lot more profit. Okay, what else? Uh, next question. When investing in commercial real estate, approximately how much do you need for earnest money and do you get a commercial approval from the bank for financing first okay 
there is no such thing as a pre-approved uh, property because because you don't get pre, you don't get pre-approved like a residential home okay so what happens is the lender says i need to see the property i need to see if it has income or it has no income and if it doesn't have any income is there a tenant line to for it to produce what are you going to do with it so what ends up happening is you need to have a proof of funds pof proof of funds that means i'm buying this property so it's a 800,000, the bank is gonna require 20% down. So here is my 200,000 sitting in the bank and I'm talking to Wells Fargo or I'm talking to this local bank. So the proof of fund has to be like that. Now, if you're working with me or, or maybe with somebody else, a hard money lender or something, you can have a proof of fund that says here is 800,000 coming your way. And that's when they take you seriously. Uh, these are the pieces to make it happen. And some people get so, um, overwhelmed by the obstacles that they don't see the solution. They don't see the way to structure the deal. They see the strategy, but the money is in the structure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. I'm in, I'm located in Sacramento. Do you think that retail would be a good asset in that market? Yes, absolutely. You know, Sacramento is growing like crazy. So the harder it is to get a property, single tenant building like this one, the easier it is to get the tenant. Let me repeat this one. The harder it is to get the property, because it's a great property, it's a great market, it's a lot of traffic, great neighboring tenants, the easier it is to get the tenant, because as soon as you get it under prop, maybe that property is a million too. But then it's not 800,000. So when you put it under contract and you start smiling and dialing, talk, talking to the tenants on my list, they say, I'm interested and I'm willing to pay 150,000 a year. Why? Because it's a bigger traffic, Sacramento, like San Jose. San Jose, we got properties at a million dollars, million two, but then the rent is a lot higher than if I'm in Kansas. So everything is relative to the market you're in, and Sacramento is definitely a growing market that you can do magic in it. Uh, next question. If you had a preference, would you prefer to invest in apartments and multi-units or standalone and retail? Standalone and retail, hands down. I mean, why am I going to want to go mess with apartment buildings and moving parts and people calling me and somebody got laid off and somebody punched somebody, somebody slipped down the stairs when I can do a property, a single tenant, sign up a tenant and I don't have to talk to them for 10 to 15. I don't talk to anybody. I have I'm standing here on Cristo Street. You can look it up. Go to my website, crepr.com. I am at 205 Cristo. You're going to see it. That's the second floor. This is my office. Here is my office right here. It's my office. Here's my nephew right here. And what's happening here is down up and down the street, I have 12 buildings. I have Anita Gelato, which is an Israeli company that has, um, that has um, ice cream, triple net, triple net deal. Many more. I have seven or eight years left. I have coach, coach pays me 30,000 a month. They've been with me 14 years. They renewed for another 11 years left on that renewal. That's triple net. Actually coach is quadruple net. They pay the tax, insurance, maintenance, and they take care of the structure. I mean, I can go on. Sunglass Hut is downstairs of this building. 207 Cristo, 205 Cristo, we're connected. Actually, I have my apartment back here. I have my office here. It connects to another office, that door right here. And, and downstairs of this next door, where is my door, oh, connecting door? Here's the connecting door. Okay, and downstairs I have a jewelry company that's a triple net deal. So I prefer to have triple net, although I do have 12 unit here, we convert it all to nightly stay because it makes a killing, it's a destination location. But yes, if I have it my own way, just this type of triple net sets you free. As a matter of fact, when I get upset and I get uptight, I start thinking triple net, triple net. <laughs> I did that. Okay, what else? Uh, two more questions. Uh, what is the biggest obstacle as a commercial investor? The biggest obstacle is when you're making an offer, you need to have the proof of funds. Once you have the proof of funds, you actually, you got the property under contract, you need to know how to analyze it. You need to know what to analyze. I tell you in these type of deals, you don't even do due diligence. All you do is you line up a tenant because when the tenant comes, they're gonna do the due diligence and they're gonna tell us on the call, you know, we need a new floor. We're going to have to put new AC. I said, well, how much is that? Well, we need 40,000 kicked in as tenant improvement. Okay, we negotiate it. If you wanted to give you 40,000, we're not going to write the contract for 100,000 a year. But 105,000 a year, 
now we're able to give you again 40,000 for your tenant improvement. You see, so first you have to have the proof of funds so the brokers take you seriously. It's controlled by the good old boys club, if you will. With all due respect to the ladies, it's a boys club. So you need to fit in, you need to know how to do it and you can make a killing with it, okay? Understand how it's a closed net network. Number two, you need to understand how to analyze that. Number three, you need to know how to work with lenders to be able to finalize the deal. What's the solution with all this? Get some knowledge. If you want my opinion, work with some lenders or set up a real estate fund, get a couple of people lined up with you. I, when I started, and I didn't think of real estate funds at the time, you know what I used to do? I used to go to the seller of the building and say, you know, I know you want to sell it. Uh, let me put it under contract. When I lined up the tenant, I would go to the seller and say something like, look, I know you want to sell it because it was vacant. Would you work with me? Can you put me as partner with you? And I'm going to add value by bringing a big tenant at 100,000 a year. And they'll be like, oh, okay, let's put that and go to an attorney and they will add me on the deed based on a condition. I'll bring this tenant at this, this, this. And then I do a refi and I cash them out. There are many ways to structure the deal. Do, do you know... That deal, I'm giving an example here, okay? I, I'll give you just one more way to, to do it, then I'm done. If they're going to pay you 8300 a month, you see that, 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 that 100000 is 8333 to be exact. Let's say you can buy, you can call the seller and say, listen, I would like to lease it from you and I'll pay you 6000 Just give me a lease with an option to buy. If I don't close within a year, I lose everything. But when you lease it at 6,000, standard in the lease agreement, you have an opportunity to sublease. So you lease at six, sublease at 8,300. And then when you have the lease and you're paying six, but you're receiving 8,300, all you have to do is go to the bank and tell the bank, I'm paying six, but I'm receiving 8,300. Will you give me a loan to cash this guy out for 800,000? I have an option to buy. And then the property appraises for more because you already have a national tenant. And this seller is happy because he's making cash flow while he's waiting and he's going to get paid the 800 later. You can even offer him 850, heck, offer him 900. People negotiate down in residential and commercial. I negotiate up, I negotiate sideways. I talk to brokers. I'm not looking for distressed sellers. I'm looking for sellers who don't know what they're doing. And there is plenty of them. Heck, half the market in commercial real estate is lost. Okay, what else? Uh, that's it. You covered everything. Well, I want to thank you all. Uh, Bill, any uh, last words of wisdom before I move on? No, man, I think you covered it all. And I think you've emblazoned triple net in everyone's brain. <laughs> well, that's one of many. But I mean, if I start talking about discount mortgage notes, I get so excited. It, it, it's amazing. I mean, discount mortgage notes, that's a whole different conversation. But I mean, cash flow from day one, etc. Suffice it to say, at 997, I doubt you will find somebody with my depth of knowledge having real estate funds with over 100 million, I've been in the market for over 25 years with these huge transactions that are creative, total transacting and investing over 30 years. We've done it all. Look us up, $997, and that's good for tonight and uh, for the next two hours. And then you can be on the next call, which is going to be July 8th. And uh, call 844-720-1031 or email Ashley tonight, right now, Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-E -E, at CMRI.com. Thank you all and have a great night. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Sharif. Thank you, sir.